hey welcome to the channel in today's video we'll be looking at a cool way to bias class ab output stages proposed by monticelli before jumping right at it we'll see what is a class ab output stage and why do we need it next we'll intuitively come up with a brute force way to bias it depending upon the key requirements finally we'll discuss what monticelli had proposed way back in 1986 There are a couple of interesting things to discuss so make sure to watch till the end perhaps at 1.5x for a better experience I'd also appreciate if you show your support by liking commenting and subscribing as these interesting circuit discussions require a considerable amount of effort from my side That being said let's jump right at it Suppose you have a conventional say a uh, common source output stage the bias current IB dictates the maximum rate at which you can charge the output So, if you want to increase that, then you would unnecessarily be wasting power during the coincident conditions. Moreover, while discharging the output, the load current equals to the NMOS current minus IB, where IB is fixed. Alternatively, the short circuit transconductance is fixed at GMN. But what if we want more than that? in a class ab stage the bias current source is replaced by a transistor carrying the signal as shown firstly the total short circuit transconductance is now gmp plus gmn <clears throat> which is roughly twice as large as before while discharging the output meaning when vn goes higher the pmos current also reduces in the previous case the pmos current was fixed at ib so if we figure out a way to bias this output stage such that we have a low coisin current then we have something really cool so what exactly do we require from our biasing well we want an accurate control on the coisin current of course it has to be low the bias circuit should be robust for that remember the same kind of elements track each other across process importantly we want a small signal short between the gates of the output transistors mp and mn because that is how we require the class ab action however for dc we require appropriate gate voltages to achieve the aforementioned requirements very simply put we require an ac short at the signal frequency so we can connect a capacitor between the gates the capacitor will also isolate the dc since it's an open circuit or high impedance for dc so if you provide the output of the previous stage at the gate of the pmos and you wish to have some kind of a high pass filtering to pass on the signal but not the dc biasing thus you can put a sufficiently large resistor as shown VBP and VBN uh, or the gate biases can be taken from an appropriate bias from the preceding stages. In order for this to work as intended, the signal frequency must be quite greater than the bandwidth of the high pass filter. So Fn should be much much greater than 1 by 2 pi Rc. R and C can be quite large, especially for small signal frequencies. Also, they would vary appreciably across process voltage and temperature variations. Understanding these limitations, Monticelli came up with something more robust. Firstly, keeping in mind that the same kind of elements would track, he decided to establish the DC bias via similar kind of elements. So that would mean that we require another NMOS and PMOS. Since we want to establish an output bias voltage from these transistors named MN2 and MP2, the intuitive way is to use them in a common drain configuration. additional constraint is that we also want both of them to propagate the same signal content put in another way we want a small signal gain of 1 between the gates of the output stages first thing that can come to your mind to achieve a gain of 1 is a source follower 
the issue is that if you apply a voltage at the gate of a transistor, then the coincident source voltage is also fixed by the VGS drop. So this is exactly where Monticelli innovated. He noted that the gain of a common gate stage can be close to unity, but only when it is loaded by a conductance close to its own transconductance. What I mean to say is that the voltage gain from the source to the drain of a transistor can be made of the form GM over GM. We already have MP2 and MN2. So we know that the impedance looking into the source is of the order of 1 by GM if the impedance at the drain isn't too large. Thus, if you connect the source and drain as shown, the resulting voltage gain would approximately be GM P2 over GM N2, which can be made close to 1. Quite, in, quite neat indeed. In the DC picture, you require a voltage of VGS plus VGS for MN2 meaning about two VGS, which can be generated by stacking up two diodes or probably even with a single diode connected transistor. Similarly, for the PMOS MP2, you would require VDD minus two VSG. The drawback is that the minimum supply voltage required is about 2 VGS plus V over drain. I personally think that this is quite cool. If you want to learn about another simple yet interesting circuit, I'd recommend you check out the video on the minimum current selector next, which is an absolute banger if you ask me. See you in the next one and don't forget to comment and subscribe.